happening guys? Mike Smith here with Cal Speed Karting, and this is your Iron Man Series preview for round number one. If you guys didn't catch the preview from the Sprint Series a couple weeks ago, this is a new way of doing things for this year, and uh, you'll see something like this for each one of the championships every round. As you know, Always let me know what you think, and uh, we'll make changes as we go. This weekend we're going to see the 10th season for the Once Around the Clock Endurance arm of Cal Speed Karting's Arrive and Drive uh, repertoire, the Iron Man Championship. And like Sprint, uh, not a lot of changes in the rule book uh, here for 2019, with the biggest thing being the pro class uh, moving to an owner-only program. And we don't expect to see a bunch of uh, entries with that, uh, unlike last year where it was Arrive and Drive. Uh, in this preview, we're going to take a little bit of a look at the differences here that Round 1 uh, brings between it and the rest of the season. The main thing being, obviously, we qualify for round number one where we do invert for the rest of the year. We're going to take a look at uh, that Classico counterclockwise layout that we're going to be on uh, and kind of see what we maybe we learned since the clinic and sprint series. And lastly, we'll take a look at that uh, uh, season opening entry list, see who's on it, who we think maybe the contender is going to be, and uh, as well as the um, one-off guys who might uh, make a little bit of noise or, or have, a, have a surprise shot at the win. First thing, like I said, we're going to talk about here is we're going to talk about the uh, the track and just kind of some of the things that we learned. Let's play this thing while I'm talking here. The uh, the main thing, um, like I said, the difference is for the uh, the first round is qualifying. Um, as we go around the course here, the, the main thing I want to point out on qualifying is that everybody's split into two groups of 15. It's a 30-cart 30, 30 field, two groups of 15 set by or, uh, order of registration. So the sooner you signed up, uh, the you know, the later you're going to qualify, arguably a little bit better uh, conditions. It's only a green-white checkered session with uh, with pretty cold tires. So that later session is going to be a little bit better, um, just kind of the way it works. Uh, they do have a little bit of uh, time on them. But, again, it's going to be uh, kind of, you know, if you sign up, you get that little bit of an advantage. Um, again, one of the things uh, that's new on the course is we're going through the new turn four, uh, or, you know, going the other direction, I think it's turn ten. Um, and then the uh, the bypass is the same, and the final corner is different. The other thing that's different is the entry of the S's. It's a lot smoother, um, and then the run down to uh, hairpins a little bit different. Um, but again, the qualifying is going to be the big differences, uh, and uh, there's not a lot uh, that's going to be different as far as the track. I will say that the track's gripped up a bit since the uh, since the opener, or excuse me, since the sprint series. Uh, this right here was taken uh, during the test day before sprint. We've done one test since, actually, um, just after the sprint. We didn't. We're not doing any of this week because of weather. Uh, but uh, yeah, the track has gotten a lot better uh, since uh, when it first started. It was really slick. Not like it's super grippy yet, but uh, that is going to be a bit of a difference. We won't finish this thing. I was going to go ahead and take a look at this guy. The, the thing I want to uh, talk about here is there's a couple differences that we made. Or we changed uh, getting on uh, on and off the course. So it used to be that we were getting on and off right here. Anybody who was here for sprint or clinic, that's now different. You're going to be uh, uh, coming off the course right here, and then you wrap around. But actually getting on the course, as you come off the pits, you're going to curl around and actually cut like this. So it's kind of like what we had had before in old Classico counterclockwise, or any clockwise tracks, where you'd curl around and back. Uh, that's now a little bit longer. So that's going to be something that the Iron Man drivers are going to have to get used to with the uh, pit stops that are going to be happening. But those are the only differences, really, that are going to make a difference. We did extend the blue wall, uh, or there's a wall right here. We extended a bit. We uh, added a wall right here. But it's off course, and it's really easy not to hit. So I don't imagine that's going to be a big deal. Um, but, you know, 12 turn course, 475 foot front straightaway gets us a decent amount of speed. Uh, and our biggest passing zone is probably going to be, you know, going on the S's. We expect the hairpin to be big, especially as the grip starts to come up. Um, and this is, this turns turned out to be a lot of fun, this new turn 10, uh, old corner curve. First person I want to talk about here in the, uh, the overall is definitely, uh, Lissiani. She, uh, is obviously the super series champ reigning. She was number two. Uh, last year in the Ironman, and with uh, the guy who graces the cover right now, uh, Taylor Hayes, not coming back for uh, for this year, we will see uh, we'll see somebody else at the top. And Alicia Yanni, she she leads everybody else. Uh, like I said, Super Series champ, and uh, uh, she's the highest returner with the uh, number two uh, standing from last year. 
obviously uh, the person who's been right on her heels all the way through in both Iron Man and in uh, Super is Sean Fight. He was the number two guy in Super and the number three guy here in Iron Man. He actually won the Summer Championship uh, via a last lap pass on Alyssa, uh, ironically enough. Um, he's definitely going to be the guy uh, putting the big challenge on out of the gate, um, followed by, quickly by Chris Huerta, who, like Sean, was right there with Yanni in both series. Uh, where to actually number four here in the Iron Man? Uh, I believe he was third in the Super Series. So those are the two guys who, right with Alyssa, the all three drivers, Yanni, Fight, where to incredibly consistent last year and were at the sharp end in both of those series. Uh, I expect them to uh, definitely be at the front the entire year and going for the championship, uh, n- both the sub championships as well as the overall. Jose de Silva is going to be coming back as the uh, number five driver. But he's not too sure if he's going to run a full season in Ironman or not. The idea is he's going to run Super, and he's also running with uh, the CSK Racing team at Trace C. But he's not sure if he's going to do Ironman or not. I think it's going to be kind of seeing how the opener goes. Um, but uh, he's a guy who can who can be at the front all the time. Uh, he's won races in Super. He's been at the sharp end in the Ironman, and I expect him to be playing a factor for sure. And next guy on the list is Steve Spring. He's number seven from last year. He's always at the sharp end. He's a former winner here in the series. Um, and he actually was going to win a race, I think, last year before a lap traffic kind of messed things up uh, for him. But always at the front and uh, always putting pressure on the guys uh, to perform. Uh, I should see him at the front uh, going for a podium at least this year, I think. TJ Blackledge is 10th. Uh, from last year, but actually would have been a little bit higher up, I think. He didn't run the uh, the finale. Uh, your Sprint Series champion from 2017, uh, last year was his first year, uh, uh, sorry, I should say first full year in the uh, Ironman Series, uh, and really started to show that he may have something here in the Ironman ranks. Uh, yeah, with his uh, increased speed, I think this is going to be a big year for him, especially since he's running this. Super and CSK. Uh, we should see big, big things out of Blackledge. Scott Milne, uh, he actually won the opener last year. Uh, kind of a breakout run for him. Definitely made the most of a good situation. And uh, unfortunately, missing the first round this year, um, he should run uh, rounds two on. But uh, he's somebody who's continued to get better and better and better. And actually, I think that uh, another full year is going to see him at the sharp end a lot. Paulo Franca, next guy on my list here. He's somebody who didn't do a full year in Super Series and only did a couple of races here in the Ironman, but he is going to be a title a contender, I think. Uh, it's it, Some mistakes last year in the Ironman Series saw him not do quite as good as maybe he should have, uh, but now that I think he knows all the rules, he should be doing a lot better. Sam Hunt, your Sprint Series champion from last year ton of speed out of this kid and i think the the seat time in iron man before it goes into super is going to help him out a bunch but here in this series um i think it's going to be interesting to see how he uh, he handles the strategy which he hasn't had to really do yet and likewise with uh, evan carp number three from sprint series uh plenty of speed and actually was on the verge of uh, being a podium guy or maybe a winner here in this series but it was light at scales so that was pretty tough for him last year um but again here's somebody who's now Actually, in his sophomore season, that has showed so much potential. I think it's going to be a guy to watch. But beyond that, though, we got some guys who are going to be wild card contenders, and absolutely Andrew Woods there. Uh, here's a guy coming from the East Coast, uh, flying in. Just going to have some fun here to kick off the year, and Woody is always someone to watch for. Uh, quite good in the old uh, Sport Car Grand Nationals and does quite, uh, quite good in Super Series as well, so watch for him. Matt Hart's going to be making an appearance. He's not doing a full season, he says, but he's going to do quite a few races here and there. Every single time he shows up, he's going to be a guy to watch. And I think especially um, uh, in the Ironman, it's going to be fun to see how he does. He's more of a sprint series kind of, or a sprint racing kind of guy. Uh, He'll be running super as well. Tyler Bryant's a guy that uh, he used to run all the time and then uh, started doing the family thing. We don't see him as much, but when he comes out, he's always quick. So I'll be curious to see how he does. Kind of the last guy on the list here is uh, Alexander Bermudez. He was somebody who actually ran pro all year last year in the pro class um, when he did run. And was always at the front. Former uh, um, front runner all the time, actually. In the, uh, in, in the uh, He was a former Sprint Series champion and also a uh, front runner all the time. He had been on a podium for Super Series uh, and second a couple times in the Masters Championship. Not running a full year. He's actually doing uh, mostly car stuff this year. 
but uh, he'll always be somebody to watch for whenever he's here. And obviously, that's uh, you know, it's interesting as the first part of the year, it's always speculation. We'll see who's going to actually be here. As you can see there, the, uh, the, the photo man there is Taylor Hayes, champion, not going to run the full year. So it's going to be interesting to see who steps up. Like we talked about, Yanni, Fight, Huerta, the front runners from last year. You'll be curious to see if they're going to be the front runners again this year. So that's the preview for round number one here, 2019 Kyle Speed Ironman Series. Appreciate you uh, turning in, and we'll, uh, we'll see you at the track.